and welcome back my dear fellows it's been quite some time and um, yeah I have not been here been working a lot been studying a lot so um, kind of was really occupied but now I try to slow down and find time to do what I love doing that is studying poker I realized that I haven't practiced for quite some time and actually it affected my game a lot um, I think if you don't have time for theory, then I think you should not play. Yeah, that's uh, the thought that I came to because, um, you see, I didn't have um, time to practice at all. At the same time, from time to time, I would jump in and play some tables. And uh, the overall results are not that perfect, I would say. It was always like flying plus minus $50. Mm, so it was not a good result that uh, you know like it was not right it was really flat um, yeah but so far so I try to slow down I try to get back mm, into my game try to feel it so um, let's start as you remember before that we recorded 25 videos where I was playing out of position and uh, I was recording this I, I, I think that a couple of hands, last hands, I think maybe I analyzed a little bit incorrectly. Um, the reason for this is, well, first, because, you know, we all make mistakes and I think I made a couple of mistakes there. Second, um, because I started forgetting some of the key points there. And I think overall the key point in poker that helps me every time to get back to my AAA game is um, this one. I wrote it down here and I always tell it, uh, I ask it myself. So the first question is, what do you charge? What hands do you charge? Uh, right, like if you see the board, any board that you can imagine, for example, king, ten, two okay and you are going to bet so the first question is what are your value bets what are you going to charge right if you are going to charge your opponent's kings right then you have to have a stronger king if you want to charge your opponent's tens then you have to have kings queens jacks though i prefer to check all of them right if you want to charge again like kings then maybe you want to have a set right so always think guys what do you what do you want to charge right what do you charge and the second question that i always ask myself is what hands do i have to charge like do i have something that i can charge with and after that i can see like i started thinking what are my bluffs to compensate for my value bets now it can improve to the best hand and continue charging our opponent. This is the key point. I think sometimes I do forget it as well. This uh, the most important concept in poker, I think. And uh, I start betting because I didn't practice for quite some time. So I would be, I think, betting pretty wild hands, trying to make our opponent fold. So this psychology to trying to make your opponent fold, this one is the wrong approach. What you really should think of is what do you charge and, and what hands do you have to charge, okay? Okay, guys, um, that's a very small like uh, pre-speech. Pre <laughs> I don't know whether I can say it in that way. Okay, good. So um, we finished uh, playing out of position on UTG. Now we're going to analyze from um, the other side, that is from the button, okay? I think if you get it how to play on the button, the rest will be much easier for you to get. I mean, this is just the key, um, the key fight that happens in poker, right? That is a UTG opens and the guy on the button calls. Okay. Um, so when we start talking about this, um, playing on the button, here come a lot of questions. So first question is like, what is our calling range? And with it automatically comes the question, what is our three betting range, right? 
Okay, so first let's start with this. Let's uh, review our opening range on UTG and start just thinking, okay? Simply we're going to think um, what is reasonable to play, okay? Wait a second, let me make it a little bit smaller. Okay, good. So as you remember, I open up these guys. I open up a little bit of ace 10. Wait a second, a little bit too much. Okay, 35%. I open up 6-6+. Six, six uh, the reason for opening up 6-6+, six, six is, as I maybe mentioned before, because then you start striking the board. If you always open up 2, 3, 4, 5, very rarely these cards come on the flop. So very rarely you will be catching your set, okay? That's why, like, it is not reasonable to open up them all the time. You can just test it out. You can just randomize 100 boards and imagine that you open up a three, four, five, two, you know, and you will see that you very rarely hit actually the board. Okay, what else? I open up ace nine plus. I'm pretty happy that I stopped opening up ace eight, ace seven, ace six. Really don't feel like playing with them that much. They're a little bit unplayable for me. It is my personal opinion, personal point of view. I open up these guys, king 10, queen 10, jack 10, king 9, jack 9, 10, 9. Okay, I open up 50% of queen 9 suited. I open up 25% of 5, 5, 9, 8, 8, 7, 7, 6, 6, 5, 5, 4, and 15% of these guys. Okay, good. So this is my number. This is the amount. This is my range. 187.4 combinations that I open up. Okay, good. Now, I'm so sorry. Okay, now we're going to think. So this is the opening range. Great. Now, what is the reasonable range to call with? Okay. And I think the most important thing that should come to your mind here is the following. Uh, you should not generally call with wider range than the opponent opens. Um, maybe if you are like super professional, you can do this. But generally, you don't want to open up to call wider than your opponent opens. Right? And there is logic in that. Why is that? So look here. Um, if you call, for example, ace 9 offsuit, ace 10 offsuit, right? Do you remember the opening range? The opening range already started stronger. The opening range was already ace 10 plus, right? Even like not so many 10s there were. So mostly like ace jack offsuit plus. So every time when you call with such like hands, uh, what do you do? If you catch an ace, you get dominated by your opponent on these boards, right? And the only thing that you can do is check call, that you can call call and then maybe bet and uh, the opponent will be defending with his stronger ace. So you are going to uh, quite often to lose with these hands. So um, that's the thing. The general idea is that you want to win your opponent, you want to dominate your opponent, you want to dominate your opponent's cards. And we're going to investigate some of the opening ranges today that are uh, suggested by different sites, okay? And then I'll show you my range, that like how generally I play. So let's see. Uh, for example, this is the um, GTO wizard that I told you about before. I think this is a wonderful site as an orientation, okay? You can check sometimes some stuff there, but still remember to work on your game because, for example, my approach to poker um, differs significantly from what this site says. Here, as you can see, the opening range is 17.7%. I open much less, and I think actually many people open much less. So, um... I generally don't open that loose, okay? And now let's take a look at the opening range of the button here. And as you can see, the opening range, uh, sorry, the calling range um, is really like side to side with the three betting range here. 
This is a very interesting uh, number to see. 7.2% is going to be the raise versus a uh, UTG. So um, this is the thing. Many people, they really like to play very aggressively and they like to 3-bet a lot. Um, and because they have this position on the opponent and they can realize their position better, right? So they can kind of control the situation. And the pot is bigger, so the opportunity to take the pot is bigger as well. And as you can see here, uh, here the amount of raise is 7.2%. For me personally, that's too much. I don't raise that much, okay? But we can see already approximately the range formation here. What hands are going to actually play, right? Here generally is six, six plus, less of fives, fours, threes, and twos, right? And no a six, no a seven, a three plus, not fully, right? Here a is jack, not fully, right? King, Queen. So generally this range. Now let's take a look at another um, side and uh, another range that is suggested by that side. The side is called um, Poker Code. I have been a member of this side for quite some time. Well, in some ways it helped me a lot, in some ways it did not. But anyway, the main thing that, uh, that I have is, well, I have access to this. <laughs> Okay, but uh, I mean, apart from this, uh, I really had some really good information from this side. Now look here. Here, the calling range of the button versus an in-position in opener, UTG, uh, is that huge. Take a look at that. The raise is only 5.7%. The calling range is 16.46. But keep in mind. Uh, this calling range is versus 2.3 big blinds opening range of UTG. And the UTG opening range here is like this. Okay, so 15.73. Still, as you can see, the opening range is tighter than uh, GTO Wizard opening range, right? And at the same time, looser than my opening range, for example, as you remember. But still, it is very interesting and curious to see that this side suggests a totally different approach. So the thing is the following. Um, the less you three bet your opponent, the looser kind you can call your opponent, okay, and realize your position. So generally, like, if you prefer to call more, then you kind of are uh, in your rights to call a little bit looser. But still, it is still not my range. You see, this one is too, too loose for me. And this one, in some ways, a little bit uh, too aggressive in terms of three bets. And at the same time, we have this wonderful book that I told you about before, right? This book, okay? Um, this, The Theoretically Sound Poker by Matthew Janda. Very good one. Okay, and here, what they say is the following. This is very interesting. They say here, three betting ranges. Uh, versus a UTG 3-bet open when we are in position. So it is 3.6%. Uh, I will demonstrate to you what is the 3 betting range versus uh, the opponent here. Ace, Ace, King, King. Ace, King suited. Ace, Jack. King, Queen. Ace, 5. And Ace, 4. This is the 3 betting range uh, that is suggested in this book. Yeah, this is very interesting to be honest to see, right? Uh, very interesting to see that. So as you can see, we have aces, kings, ace, kings, right? We compensate these super value, heavy value uh, hands with some bluffs, you see? We have overall mm, 2018, 18 we have um, value bets and the rest, these are all bluff bets. Very interesting, but I think I'm sure that you saw that people three bet queen queen jack jack ten ten, and to be honest, <laughs> some people three bet everything, right? Even seven to offsuit. Okay, now let's take a look at the calling ranges that are suggested in this book. Okay, button flat versus UTG uh, open. So what do they suggest? Queen queen jack jack ten ten. So three three plus. This is their calling range that they suggest. Ace-King offsuit, 
ace queen offsuit these guys uh king queen king jack king 10 like this okay jack 9 10 9 okay 9 8 8 7 7 6 6 5 and 5 4 this is the calling range that is suggested by this book okay you can just uh take out the bluffs here that we had and three bets right like this and you will see here that it is 11.2 percent that they suggest this is already closer to my range though of course i still do some um i, I still a little bit adapt so in a little bit different way so but i really like the three betting range here it is more reasonable now let's let's see um mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As you can see, so the book suggests and writes a lot of times, uh, they write in the book that it is very reasonable to actually call with ace-queen suited, ace-jack suited. It doesn't mean that you have to call all the time. Sometimes, of course, you do want to three bet these hands. Uh, the thing is, um, you really want to dominate your opponent sometimes. That's why, like, when your opponent opens up with ace-jack, you do want to dominate him and call with ace-queen sometimes. And even with ace king sometimes. I really like it that actually they write here ace king that you're going to call here. Of course, a lot of people they just three bet ace king. But I really actually like this approach that sometimes you call, sometimes you three bet your ace king. I think this is really, really interesting and really good. Okay, so I will do some I will make some changes here. Uh first let me arrange like this fully. I think I do call sometimes. Mm, I stand very rarely. Uh, maybe I do call actually. Let me do the same. Like I will do the same. Like thirty-five percent. In order to easier remember this, I will do this. Okay, maybe twenty-five, so that we are a little bit tighter than the opening opponent. I do call my nines. I think generally, I think I do call ten eight, nine seven already less. I think. And these guys I love calling as well. I don't like calling these guys. I think for me they're still very unplayable. Uh, it depends on the opponent. If the opponent is a maniac or a very wide loose recreational player, you might want to call with these hands, right? But um, just don't bluff for them, okay? <laughs> okay, good. So this is approximately my uh, button range. I still want to arrange it in the way that I can see my uh, three bets here and uh, my well, yeah my three bets generally. Let me compare a little bit. So as you can see, I don't like to play kings that much as uh, they play as further holds place here. I don't like to play in this way. I don't call these guys right. Ace five, ace oh I'm sorry, ace eight, ace seven, ace six suited. I don't call fully ace ten. Yeah, I call less of these guys. Okay, good. Okay, now we compare these two ranges. So this range and actually this one look, uh, this one is much closer to mine, right? I just still don't play ace8, ace7 that they play here. I prefer to play more ace2 in order to catch the best flushes. I play fully ace3. I play, you see, ace-jack I play actually usually. Ace 10, I play two, a little bit. Mm -hmm. And here, as you can see, 9, 8, 8, 7, they are much less in call here. Usually because uh, they get very often dominated by top, um, top straight. You know, if you have Jack 10, Queen, this is really painful, right? You have just to defend them. But the opponent might be too aggressive and might, might be jamming into you. So be careful. Okay, good. Uh, generally, I call a little bit more, like 3-3, three, 4-4, three, four, four, five, 5 I think I do call with them uh, more, just really carefully. If the opponent opens three big blinds, then I might want to fold these 3-3, three, 4-4. Three, four, four. You see, I still want to be a little bit, you know, like tighter. Okay, good. And I really love playing these suited connectors, so that's why I call them fully here. But at the same time, I don't go beyond my... Like, I don't go too crazy, right? I might call sometimes a 6 9 7 I think. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, but 
I think not more than this. Okay, generally. So this is going to be my my uh, overall like range. Now, what do I three bet? Ace, 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 king, ace, king suited. I think I do want to three bet ace, king of suit. Here they suggest to three bet 75% of the time, here 50% of the time. To be honest, I feel like staying closer to 50% of the time in order to, how to say, trick my opponents. So I think it is like this. Okay. Now I'm going to, I think, value bet ace5. Not value bet, but three bet. Ace5, ace4. To be honest, even sometimes ace3, ace2, I do this as well, like this. Okay, let's take a look what they suggest here. Ace5, ace4, ace3. Here, ace5, ace4, ace3. Okay, this is good. Mm -hmm. And now let's see, what else do we usually like to 3-bet? I think I do 3-bet queens, maybe 50% of the time. I think I do 3-bet my jacks, but already less. Maybe, hmm, generally I do this 50% of the time as well, I think. Should be like this, I feel like. I think I do 3-bet ace-queen, ace-jack. Hmm, sometimes ace-10, king-10. I think all these guys, sometimes I do 3-bet as well. Mm -hmm. Queen-jack, queen-10, jack-10, I prefer to call. King-10, hmm. Here they suggest to call with it. What do they suggest here? Two, three bet sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think generally I want to call with them as well. I like to call with them and uh, in order to keep the pot lower. The thing you see with these three bets is the following. Like if your opponent calls with king queen suited and you three bet him with king 10, right? So your king 10 is, uh, will be dominated. Maybe you really want to call with it. Okay, and I want to 3-bet with these guys, ace-jack, king-queen. I think they're really good. Why they're really good to 3-bet? They're kind of block 3-bets. Because they block significantly our opponents' aces, jacks, kings, and queens, right? Uh, sets, I mean. Yeah, I mean, not sets, like pairs, right? A pair of jacks, you see, feels uh, doesn't feel like the opponent will have it. A pair of queens, so the possibility for this is much less when you have king-queen offsuit, right? So this is very powerful to play. It blocks like two cards at the same time. So very good. Pay attention to this. Okay, so approximately this is going to be my three bet range, okay? Like this, I think. And let me take a look at my um, three bet here. Hmm, how to calculate this? Okay, so this is 4% that I'm going to 3-bet. Hmm, I think it is a little bit wider than what they suggest in the book here, right? Because in the book they suggest 3.8. Uh, we are wider here. This is kind of good. At the same time, we are tighter than here and here, right? 7.2 I feel too much and the call is too little. Uh, at the same time here, 5.73. Uh, here they bet more, is 10 ace jack, but pay attention, this one is for 2.3 opening range, right? So keep it in mind. King jack, they really like to 3 bet here. King jack, what about this one? King jack as well. Yeah, also overall like these jacks look ace jack, king jack, queen jack. Hmm. Maybe I will add up a little bit of these uh, jack jack 3 bets, right? Like this. Okay, look here. 55.5 and 4.2. I think this one is a very beautiful number that I really want to keep. And the rest I'm going to uh, call. Okay, uh, guys, one more time. Doesn't mean that you just like sit and count. Try to feel the game. If the opponent is too tight, maybe you even want to fold this jack of suit. If the opponent is too light but loose aggressive, you might still want to check call with this. Some crazy opponents will be just betting into you all the time. Okay, so generally this is my uh, calling range here, approximately, like this. I will save it. I like it. 
Okay, let me see overall this range. Oh, how many cards here overall? Okay, 16.8. I feel all right, 16.8. Let me compare a little bit. Here we have 6.1 and 7.2. That is approximately 13.3. Okay, so I'm wider than that one, which is fine for me. And here, uh, 5.7 plus 16.4. 20 almost 22 percent right so i'm pretty happy with my range as you can see there are different approaches to all these ranges um how to work with them uh right there is no like absolute like correct range that they will tell you yes absolutely like this you know you always have to think because the game is very much alive can you hear me test test yeah yeah the game is very much alive you see and it always changes always something happens there so this is my range overall. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm good. I'm good for that. Okay, I will save this range. I want to save it. Okay, this will be button call versus UTG open. Okay, and here button call, I want to put some percentage here. I'll write like this button call. Um, maybe plus three bat. Maybe just button range versus UTG open. Okay, button range versus UTG open and the percentage at the end, 16.8%. And I raised that 4.2% rebat. Okay, good. So like this, I feel fine. As you can see, our opponent is going to open up 14.1%. And uh, we are going to play with, if we call, just cold call, we're going to have 12.6%. I feel pretty fine with that. All right, save it. Oh yeah, by the way, guys, I didn't tell you. Actually, I do sometimes, what's going on? Wait a second, wait a second. Where is my range loaded? Yeah, actually I do sometimes rebat these guys, 766554. They are very powerful three bats. Yeah, as you can see here here as well, uh, you must have them in your three betting range because they're really, really good to play. Very important to have in order to trick your opponent. So let's change a little bit uh, here. Where is my, hmm, wait, what is this? This range, okay, good. Okay, so this one we will change a little bit. Uh, we will add up a little bit of these guys so these are going to be my three bets as well okay good uh, yeah as you can see we have 4.5 right 4.5 now okay I'm going to resave it 4.5 here okay good and this one I will delete good okay now I'm fine with that yeah as you can see uh, 4.5 my three bet great my three bet increased and at the same time, my calling range decreased, which is good as well for us. So we have stronger range now. Um, now, let's see. Okay, good. So this is our range that we have. Good. Um, now, how we are going to play with this range here? Let's try to understand. We're going to throw away our three bets from this hand, right? And uh, then we will just think purely. Okay, let's go here. So as you remember, we threw away Ace King. In order to make it easier, I will throw away these guys. I will throw away 50% of my Queens. Like 50%, I like to throw it away. 50, 50, 50, 50. And um, I will throw away Ace King 50%. I will throw away 50% of Ace 5. Um, okay, let's do this. Uh, okay, like this like this and like this and these guys okay voila good so i throw away some of my hands here uh that are going to be my three bats maybe a little bit more i will throw away ace jack queen jack right 75 percent ace 10 ace jack 75 percent please ace 10 ace jack uh king jack queen jack yes like this okay like these guys i'm pretty happy with this very good. To be honest, even King Queen sometimes I can three bet still as well. 
guys, like, just feel the game. Sometimes you have to three bet some stuff, this and that, okay? So just be all right with that. Mm-hmm. Okay, feels good, feels good. Now, let me do this. Okay, okay. Now, good. Okay. I will delete this phone at the moment because we don't need this. Okay, because we already have our predefined range in this way that we see. We threw away some of these guys. It will be easier for us to work. Okay, good. Like this. Yeah, as you can see, the opponent is going to dominate in terms of accuracy here. And this is reasonable, understandable, because the opponent has aces and kings and other stuff here. And we three bet some of this stuff. Okay, good. Now, let's just pick up some of the flops and see how we're going to play here. What we're going to do here, right? Okay, good. Let's just pick up um, this crazy flop here. Okay, I had this flop today. I think I played well, but still, <laughs> I still lost. The opponent was uh, very loose and aggressive. Okay, uh, but anyway, I want to investigate this flop and see um, how to play on this flop. What we can do here? What should we do here? And I will imagine that the opponent opened not on the cutoff, but the opponent opened on UTG, okay? Because we play generally versus UTG, I want to think versus UTG here, and that's why like, I'm going to analyze in this way. Okay, good. Let me open up our... Okay, this one. Okay, guys, so the flop was... Wait a second, let me take a look again. Okay, Jack... 8, 10, rainbow, jack, 8, 10, rainbow, okay, you see colors don't matter here, you can choose any colors, okay, and as you can see, evaluate, we still are going to be dominated by our opponent, that's why we generally, like, we, uh, our opponent is going to bet here, as you can see, he dominates the table, so he is going to bet his queens, kings, aces right he wants to charge us right here right now that's what he's going to do now um remember this that the opponent bets with his queens sorry for that bets with his queens bets with his kings bets with his um aces right which means we can three bet and the opponent will be in a very tough spot now let's see let's try to analyze what are we going to three bet here okay so first, let's just try to find out our absolute best hands here that we have, okay? Aces, tens, jacks, I think. Um, I think jack-10 is good. Ace-jack, ace-jack, these are relatively strong. We can three bet them sometimes, I think. I will put them like this, but I think I will think about this. Okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What else? Do I have queen nine? I do. I have queen nine, so I have the best straight here. This is good. And, um, mm -hmm. okay, good. So, so far, take a look at that. Even if we bet fully our ace jacks, which I think actually is not very good because uh, our jacks, our ace jack, I think they should call sometimes. The opponent might have ace queen, might have ace king i mean like not ace queen 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 and king king right so i think we must be careful here and i will decrease the amount of calls with these guys okay good now look here so these are the hands that we generally want to raise here right i don't know like should we call with anything maybe with jacks sometimes you want to call some jacks right maybe queens you don't want maybe to three bet all of your straights, especially if the opponent is super aggressive. I think you do want sometimes to entrap your opponent and call with king with queen nine. And jacks I will decrease. Okay, very good. Now look here. Aces. Oh, sorry, eights. <laughs> Tens, right? Um, oh, do you remember we have actually queens in our range as well? With queens, I think the same. You can call or you can raise them. Because they charge our opponent's jacks, right? I think there's a really good race here. Now, let's see. So far, we have 16.75 value hands. Let's just take a look and compare when they play in position. How many hands are they going to uh, value raise here? 
let me take a look when they play in position okay value raises seven here here value raises let me take a look at some other hands okay here the range is not suitable for value raises here value raises eight hmm that's interesting actually in this book there are not so many value raises here let me see let me check some other value raises here no value raises okay here false no value raises again hmm that's interesting the amount of value raises that they have here is much less than what i have <clears throat> mm -hmm. that's interesting cut off versus the button okay and let me take a look at the last one possibly here value raises 14 okay good okay as i can see here um yeah uh value raises here 14 bluff raises 21 approximately so 1.5 bluffs right and in the beginning they said uh let me take a look here in the beginning the ratio value raises 7 bluff raises 12 okay so um now we have identified our value raises a lot of value raises here i don't know whether we should play in this way i feel like we do we have to i called some of my very strong hands still like queen nine and uh, jack jack hmm okay now let's see what are we going to um bluff raise here okay so in this book according to the book we have to have approximately 1.5 or two bluff raises for every value raise okay let's take a look here if we are going to work in this way let's open up the calculator calculator wait a second calculator mm -hmm. okay here we are so we have 16.75 multiply I think I shouldn't over bluff too much here, so I will multiply by 1.5 and let's see whether I can find 25 bluffs here approximately. Okay, now let's see what are we going to bluff. I think it is reasonable to bluff our nines here. Hmm, I really want to call nines as well, to be honest. I think. Mm -hmm. Should we bluff here at all? Nine eight suited. Feel like check calling to be honest. Nine. Hmm. Feel like check calling as well. I don't know. You see the things we have so many bluffs, so we don't even know. Like, do we want to uh, you know like to play in a different way? Do we call everything here? Looks like we never bluff here mostly, right? very tough spot and the opponent has his queen nine as well that he bets not so many as we do but the opponent does have it the, yeah this is a tough board to be honest like you know we don't even have enough for bluff raises so that's why like i suppose in this book very often they suggest just calls you see here you call with uh, whatever you have and um mm, I think I can possibly bluff raise on my 9-8 like this. Hmm. Wait a second, 9-8 is this one. 8-7. Hmm. Ace-queen. Bluff raise kings and nines help us. King queen, I don't know. Like if the opponent is aggressive, maybe some of the king queens are good to bluff raise. Hmm. Yeah, maybe in this way. Look, I think these are kind of really good candidates, because look here, ten nine will already have a pair of tens. Jack nine will have a pair of jacks. Nine nine, maybe nine nine we can bluff raise as well sometimes though i prefer to call with it as well mm. 
Yeah, I think eight seven nine eight is queen offsuit, king queen offsuit, king queen suited. Okay, and I think like this. Mm -hmm. Now, what are we going to call here? I think we can actually bluff raise as well diamond star like this. Okay, good. And now let's see what are we going to call here. If the opponent bets um 67% of the pot, right? We have to defend them. Let me take a look at our minimum defense frequency, MDF that we had here. Let me bring this up. Okay, let's see. Versus uh 67, 66% of of the pot, we have to defend approximately 60%. Okay. So um, let's see, overall our calling range was like this, 144, 144, I'm actually I'm, I'm still pretty happy with my bluffs here to be honest guys, okay 144 multiply 0 0.6, okay good, so this is the amount of hands that we are going to defend, let's see what else can we defend here, I think we are going to call ace king, very powerful, we can catch the best um, we can catch the best straight, plus we can catch an, a, a king or an ace. Okay, uh, jacks we are going to call, tens we are going to call, jack 10. Okay, good. We are going to call, as you remember, some of our uh, jacks here and some of our jacks here. Okay, now this is good. We are going to call these tens. We are going to call, I think, all these guys. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, that's it. Exactly, guys, that's it. We cannot go out oh, this one, ace 10. We cannot go below 7, as you can see, because we're going to be dominated. Like 7 is the maximum, but actually 9 comes out and the opponent has a queen, and that's it. We are bye bye as well. You see? That's why, like here, I think uh, that's, <laughs> to be honest, that, that's it. Yeah, that's just it, as you can see. We can 3-bet some hands here, um, as you can see, right? But like it doesn't change uh, the general meaning much. Uh, we're going to stay in the game with approximately 90 hands, like 86, 90 hands. Okay, so this is going to be it, I think. And um, this is really cool just to see this and to work with this, yeah? Um, as you can see, yeah, actually, King-Queen, should we 3-bet? Uh, race, I mean, like, yeah, these king, king, queen suit. I think we can call with them as well sometimes. That's exactly what I did, especially if you have uh, them of hearts, of diamonds, uh, oh, sorry, of uh, clubs and uh, of spades, right? Yeah, so I think 50% you are going to raise, maybe, and 50% you are going to call like this. Mm hmm. Yeah, and this queen da. We're going to call with everything except for diamonds. Like this. Uh huh. Yeah, voila, guys. So this is the amount of hands that we're going to defend. A little bit too wide, right? But that's all right. I think that's all right, generally. Approximately, we're fine. So that's good. Yeah. Voila, guys. Uh, voila, I think that's how I'm going to play. Um, on this board, right? I feel fine with that. As you can see, we dropped everything be below eight here. Voila, like eight, seven is our last call here. Voila, yeah, so thank you very much, guys, for um, you being with me and investigating this play, um, this play that we have here, okay, where, when we are on the button. Remember, um, the opponent will call sometimes, right? So with your free bets, be prepared for the turn, right? And remember to tell your story till the very end. You know, if this story looks logical and reasonable, right? I mean, when you bluff. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, so, so far, that's it. That's it. Thank you very much, guys, and see you next time. Bye-bye.